when we use the word keyframe, I'd say that there are really two meanings for that word. One meaning is the frame on the clip that you're working on. That's a keyframe, it has settings on it. And another meaning is the icon itself, I suppose, the little symbol that represents the keyframe that in a way, I suppose, actually contains those settings. If I expand my 2V track here, I've got a couple of layers in this sequence. One's a background color mount and the foreground is just a simple image of a flower. If I turn on my mixer and add some keyframes, here we go, you see I'm using that word, or we're adding a keyframe, and click and drag these to adjust them. I'm adjusting the amount of mixer, the amount of opacity that this layer has. So is it the frame itself or is it the icon? I suppose it's both, and we use those two words to mean basically the same but slightly different things. Edius has, I suppose, two approaches to keyframing. One is what I'm doing here, right on the timeline, and another is working with the advanced keyframing functionality built into many of the effects, including the layouter. And what I'd like to do is just take a, a moment to look through this advanced keyframing interface and explore ways of using them to create effects. Right now in the layouter, I'm in 2D mode. You can see up at the top here, I'm in 2D mode, and I'm gonna switch over. Before I do uh, switch over to 3D mode, just take a look at the rotation. You'll notice that the rotation control, if I expand it down here in this keyframing panel, and by the way, this panel appears in many of the effects in EDIUS, you'll notice that I've really just got a rotate control. I don't have X, Y, and Z rotation. And that's because, well, there is only one. You see here within the interface, I can click and drag, and I'm changing the rotation technically on the Z axis. Now I'm just gonna undo a couple of times. I'm pressing control Z, and I'm gonna switch over to 3D mode. And now in 3D mode, I've got a couple of extra options. First of all, under rotate, I've now got X, Y, and Z. And also, if I expand my position control there, you can see I've got X, Y, and Z as well. Now people have different approaches to working with keyframes. Personally, as much as possible, I like to lay down the keyframes first and then make adjustments. It makes it a bit easier to find my way around, and I'm gonna do this now with some rotation. First of all, let's take a look at the controls. You'll notice if I display my rotation controls here that I can click and drag on these just as easily as I can click and type. And these adjustments are actually the same as the adjustments over here in the parameter section of this interface. It's actually the same thing. You see how I drag one and it adjusts the other. So it doesn't really matter where you make the adjustment. What matters is whether or not you have a keyframe. Now, again, I'm just gonna undo. In fact, I'll just click reset all. Yep, that'll get us back to the start. And the first thing I suppose then is to add a keyframe. So I'm gonna turn on the keyframing for all of the parameters in the layouter. And you'll notice that several of these different sections are categories and all of them are categories within this layouter heading. So if I add, for example, a keyframe here under the layouter section, I'm actually adding a keyframe to every single setting on the list. And I'm being super lazy here, but it's actually not a bad thing to do because then it means that from now on, any adjustments I make are going to add a new keyframe. Now that keyframing's turned on, make an adjustment, you're adding a keyframe. And I'll show you what I mean. Here I've got my Z axis rotation control right inside the interface. And I'm just going to click and drag around about 180 degrees. I'm gonna be pretty lazy. In fact, look at that, I've hit 180 degrees exactly. And now that's added a keyframe, but there was one already in position at the beginning, which was set to the default value. So if I drag back, you can see this is now introducing our animation. Now that I have keyframes in this little mini timeline, and by the by, this timeline represents the duration of the clip that I'm working with, and it's got a little zoom control here, and I can zoom in and out very easily with it. I've got play and loop play, undo, redo. Now that I've got these keyframes, I can click and drag them in time if I want, and adjust them wherever I like. And right away, we're ready to make use of these sets of three buttons. This is go to previous keyframe, this is go to next keyframe, and the middle button will either remove a keyframe if you're on it right now, and it's quite useful that it lights up in green so you know you're on a keyframe. What you don't want to do is be just next to a keyframe, make an adjustment, and then suddenly you've added two keyframes very, very close together, and you get this jumping effect of the animation. I'll just undo that with Control Z. 
So these buttons will remove keyframes. They'll also add a keyframe if you don't have one already. And again, if I undo, I can click on the top, top category here, Layouter, and add a keyframe for absolutely everything if I want, which again, I'm going to undo. So here I've got my keyframe. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over a little bit and I'm going to pull this clip up and I'm going to add some uh, X rotation there and maybe a little bit of Z rotation and I'll maybe I'll just mess this up totally and introduce some Y rotation as well if I can get that control there let's just click and drag now I could do this using the controls but I suppose it's a little bit more fun a little bit more dynamic and direct using the, the interface and now look at this if I expand one of these animation controls and I'll just pull up the interface a little bit so you can see clearly what's going on. You'll notice that I get this simplified graph view that represents that individual control. So I've got a pan pot control. See, now I'm adding another keyframe there. And I can click and drag these up and down directly in situ to adjust the settings. You can see that animating at the top of the display. If I right click on any of these, or in fact, I can lasso all of them if I want to, I can just lasso right across here and make a big selection. But if I right click on any of these, I can change the type of keyframe to hold or linear as the default or to Bezier. See, I've got the option to add or reset if I want, some pretty standard options here. But if I choose Bezier, now when I select the keyframe, I get these extra little handles which I can use to create very subtle curved lines for this setting over time. So you see now I've got this, it's actually animating backwards and forwards because of that line. It's pretty dinky at this scale though, so if I want I can expand this by clicking and dragging between the two listings, in this case of Y and Z, that gives me a bigger control. Or, bigger still, I can click on this graph mode button and get the entire interface dedicated to the one control I've got selected. Here's Y, here's X, uh, here's the X stretch control. Choose an entry and you get a graph just to work on that control. So you've got very, very detailed settings. Now in this case, I'm working on controls for the layouter. And if I click OK, you can see my rather fantastic, uh, perhaps not particularly imaginative animation. But you can imagine if I layered this with multiple other clips, you can imagine how easy it would be to create more complex layered compositions. So that's an introduction to the advanced keyframe controls available in many of the effects in EDIUS. Thank you.